Hello everyone, I'm your host today, Brett Barrow, creator of Her Feed. And before we begin, I just need to read this disclaimer. As a reminder, the information provided during this event is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. For medical questions, please reach out to your primary care or healthcare professional. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, today we are talking about express care and self-care. And joining me today is Kristen Rhodes, who is a family nurse practitioner with Providence Express Care in Irvine, California. Hello, Kristen, and welcome. Hi, Hi everybody. Thank you. I'm so grateful to be here. It's nice to have you. So before we really get into this show, um, can you tell us about a little bit more about yourself and what your role here is at Providence? Awesome. Yeah, I've, I'm a family nurse practitioner working at one of our sites here in Southern California. I'm in Irvine, but sometimes I'll be in Mission Viejo where we're doing some uh, preoperative swabbing for COVID. And um, I've been a nurse practitioner since 1999. I love it. And, um, you know, I, I'm really grateful to be part of Providence as of uh, 2019 when Express Care came to Southern California. So actually, you just touch on something that I wanted to quickly ask. Uh, for people that don't know what Express Care is, can you tell us what it is? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Express Care is, I, I kind of label it as an interim between urgent care and your, your primary care office. So, you know, our, our primary care offices are so busy with so many um, issues that sometimes patients may call and not get an appointment for like a month or two months. And so Express Care can help meet some of those needs of kind of bridging over into primary care. At the same time, because we have a virtual platform as well as an in-person clinics, um, we work either seven to seven or eight to eight. Um, some of our express cares are actually inside Walgreens pharmacies. Um, we're actually able to help meet some of the urgent care needs. Now, some of the urgent care needs, like we don't have radiology. If you think you broke a bone, we're gonna usually direct you either to an urgent care with radiology or the emergency room. So that's kind of the neat thing about when people do call in for virtual or see us, uh, we also have the ability to navigate them to the proper uh, source for healthcare. Oh, wow. I'm sure you guys were quite busy this last year. Very much so, and still are. <laughs> I was just going to say, and still probably are. But, um, you know, it is a new year. And although we are not out of the woods yet, um, I do think that a lot of people tend to make, I, I'm not going to use the word resolution. I'm going to say goal, make it a goal to make their uh, health a priority. Um, and a lot that normally goes into health is sort of, you know, your own personal health. So something like self-care. Um, how would you describe self-care? So a lot of people think that self-care is about, you know, sending themselves off to a spa retreat or just, you know, spending hours meditating and doing yoga. And, and that's not what it's about. I, I find that self-care is a daily practice to kind of help remember that when I take care of me first, I'm better able to take care of those around me. Um, I always say self-care should never be to the point of abandonment or neglect, um, whether it's your home, your children, your husband, I, you know, it's one of those things that it's doing a little bit of something every day to know that you took care of yourself so that hopefully in the long run, you're not going to have long-term consequences of your health. And that, like one of the other adages is, you know, if a, they tell us when we're on a plane that if the plane's going to go down, you need to put the oxygen on you first before you put it on other people. Because then if, if you go, then you're completely worthless to help other people or to be able to serve others around you. On that note, what, are some, what would you say are your top five list of self-care activities? Well, pretty much how I go through my day, my top five is I meditate on a daily basis. Um, I, I move, whether it's stretching, taking a walk, walking the dog. I try to make um, better eating choices and um, really careful about, <clears throat> excuse me, setting boundaries. So if I am, you know, there's people who will make three different commitments at a time. And I'm like, no, 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 setting boundaries is important and being OK that no is a complete sentence. And the other most important thing that I've really in, in captured is just enjoying the moments that we have now. Yeah, I think this last year especially has been a year where we've been forced to sort of live in the moment because there was so much unknown. Um, as far as, you know, sort of bridging the gap between self-care and health care um, and being the beginning of the year. Uh, what do you, would you say that making um, a regular checkup with their doctor, it, it, uh, making a regular doctor's appointment is a part of self-care? Well, absolutely. I mean, even, you know, if you look at your physical self, sometimes, you know, are you going to your dentist twice a day? Excuse me, twice a day. Wouldn't they love that? Yeah. Um, if they were going to your dentist twice a year, 
if you uh, wear glasses, are you getting your annual eye checkups? Um, and then usually getting eye checkups every year after 40. Um, and then the physical part about health maintenance is, is the physical. Now, some people think that a physical is about this massive physical with all these details, every lab test under the sun. And that's not what it's about because when we look at the realities of where um, people develop cancers and how we can detect them early, if we're looking at, at items that could prevent us from developing into diabetes or hypertension, that's what a health maintenance wellness exam is. It's not even about a physical. I always try to tell people, you know, you want to you want to book your wellness exam, and the wellness exam varies for different people. So if you're, you know, ch young children, it's about brain development and getting their vaccinations. If it's teenagers, we start talking about safety risks. Um, uh, sexual practices, avoiding alcohol and drugs and smoking. And then as we come under, in the young 20s, it's more again, you know, the leading cause of death is accidents. So we wanted to help teach them again about lowering their safety risk. And as we get older, you know, the guidelines change a little bit. As a woman, it may be about how often are you doing um, your mammography and, and getting your cholesterol checked, your blood pressure checked. And then as we get even older, we are looking at how are you functioning? How is your memory? Do you have people to take care of you? Are you eating well? So everything varies based on your sex, your risk factors, your family history, um, as well as your age. And um, I always also, if people are kind of confused, I wonder what I need to do. The United States has um, on the U.S. Preventive Services um, Task Force, they have an app called Preventive Task Force, and you can just put in your name and your risk factors, and it'll tell you everything you need and, and things you really don't need. Um, and the good thing is, is that nothing is written in stone. So it is important to check in with your healthcare provider at least once a year because you may, you can't just follow everything perfectly as the guidelines. You have to modify it. And that's the expertise of your healthcare pro provider is that they understand, oh, because you have breast cancer, I need to do this. Oh, because you smoked, maybe I do need to screen you earlier for osteoporosis. So those things are very important. And that's what the skill of your physician, nurse practitioner, or physician assistant is able to do. And actually, on that note, um, is that something that someone could get done at an Express Player Clinic? So Express Care at this time, um, we're on a different charting system than, uh, at least in Southern California, than most of our primary care offices. And we're working on trying to continue to build that relationship with primary care. If somebody is absolutely has no time, can't go in, we can do a physical, it's just not preferred because we have a different variety of providers every day that may be in the clinic. Like you can't just call up and ask for me. Um, we work as a, as a team and we're united in that. But if somebody's not going to go to the doctor's office, um, I wanna capture that person where they are right now so we can get them invested into their healthcare. And then if there's any follow-up to really make sure that they're following up with a primary care provider. That makes a lot of sense. Um, should people uh, still, because one of the things that, you know, right now we're in the midst of typically is flu season. Um, so what would you say, should people still be getting the flu vaccine this year? Uh, absolutely. So we are actually, um, it's one of the things we can test for when you're in an express care is uh, we can run influenza tests and guess what? People are coming in positive for COVID, uh, not only COVID, excuse me, influenza. So every year I, I, I get vaccinated, most of my healthcare providers do as well. And a lot of people think that when we get vaccinated, well, we're just trying to protect ourselves. Well, no, we're trying to protect ourselves. So we're not the vector of giving you something if you can't get the vaccine or you refuse to get the vaccine. And flu seasons, yes, in Southern California, um, or at least the United States, you know, our flu season tends to run from like October to February, but there are times where the flu season may, uh, one year flu season, I was still getting cases into August. And the other thing is, is if you tend to travel a lot, especially internationally, that flu travels through the world at different times. And so you, if you're a frequent traveler, I would always recommend a flu vaccine. Um, is, uh, is it possible that I, well, um, I guess on the note of uh, vaccines, is it possible that at some point um, people will be able to get their COVID vaccine at an Express Care, care Clinic? Um, we're working on that in some in certain ways. So um, I, interestingly enough, yesterday I volunteered at our local county's um, vaccination and we're vaccinating in our county 65 years and up. It is a logistical experience unlike anything I've ever experienced. 
So right now it's easy. If you're a healthcare provider, you got a badge, maybe your hospital system has uh, pharmacies to be able to distribute the vaccines, um, which most of us have been. Um, and if you're 65 and older, you get to show your ID and you're in. So um, what we're not doing at Express Care because of the types of vaccines that are uh, approved in the United States, the Pfizer and the Moderna, they have to be um, handled at very specific temperatures or it makes the vaccine um, Ill 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 just um, ineffective. So if they, um, we, we just know at our individual clinics, we can't do that. However, most of the healthcare systems around us, including Providence, like they are, they are communicating with their local county resources. Because remember, everything is coming from the federal government to the state, and then it gets distributed to the counties. Mm -hmm. So I know for us that Providence is working with um, our local county um, about developing maybe separate pods. And so if we have a pod for our Providence uh, patients, there may be a call out to have us come over and vaccinate or supervise vaccination, just similar to how we've been doing it within the hospital itself. So right now, don't make an appointment at Express Care to think you're going to get a vaccine. We don't we don't have them in, in house and none of our doctor's offices do. Not a, not for COVID, but you can get not your for COVID. flu. Absolutely. OK, just wanted to clarify that one. Um, what about uh, I guess going back to self-care, which I personally, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about because I think for a while it seemed like such a buzzword. And then after the last year that we had, you realize how important it is to really, and how important it is to take care of yourself, but how truly important our health is collectively. Um, so what would you say people could do, you know, people that have hectic lives or busy lives, like how do you actually manage you know, adding self-care into your daily routine? Okay, so one of the things I think about is living in the world of 20 minutes. Like a lot of people just think everything has to be hours on end of doing things. So whether it's a 20 minute meal, 20 minute exercise, 20 minute uh, meditation, um, all of these little things I think most people can do within 15 to 20 minutes. It's just a matter of how you're gonna carve them out into the world. So one of the first things I always recommend to people is the, the easiest thing for your nutrition is to like, Eat the rainbow. So we have this little guide from some of us who have done a program uh, through the Institute of Functional Medicine, but it's eat the rainbow. So like, are you having two reds today, two purples, two yellows? And, you know, I and I also tell people on their dish, like it should be, it, it can't be all brown and orange. That's not good for you. That's a really high starchy food. So just start putting in more greens and reds and oranges. So if you eat the rainbow, and I promise you, if you spend most of your rainbow in the produce section, you can eat as much as you want. And, and, and I recently, my clothes are a little baggy because I actually lost weight because I'm starting to work better on eating the rainbow. Um, and then you don't even have to worry about the portions. Um, the other thing is, is about your hard choices when you're eating. So when I, um, I kind of came up with this concept, is it gonna make you feel better now to have it? Or is it gonna make you feel better later because you made a better choice? Um, my first instinct was transitioning from white rice to brown rice. I'm like, oh, I don't like brown rice. And then. <laughs> But I knew later that if I, I'm like, I feel better because I had the brown rice. If you're gonna, I always tell my patients when, you know, they were wondering how to cut some fats out of their diet. I go, well, first of all, you need to go down to the single patty. You need to get rid of the cheese. Now, if you're gonna use fries, I'd rather you eat cheese because cheese at least has dairy and there was some calcium and some vitamin D in there. But if, if people can gradually start to kind of elimin eliminate this or when you're ordering at a restaurant, if they have a bunch of cheese, just tell them half the cheese. The cooks will do it for you. It's like, do I need a three egg omelet? No, can you make that as a two egg omelet? And they go, well, then that would be a scramble. I go, then make it a scramble and throw <laughs> in some vegetables. Um, I also say if it's brown, dry and gritty, it's good for you. So, you know, lots of fiber come in brown, dry, gritty foods and, and your nuts and your whole grains. So that's one of the things that you would do. And the other thing I always tell people to do, oh, I brought it out here where I lost my prop, um, is menu planning. So I think, Menu planning is really important. Even if you menu plan only four of your meals at home, that's better than just grabbing something on the run because you, you can't have any time for it. And when you menu plan, you can look at what foods you're eating for the week. And so sometimes if you have like, right now I have a bunch of Brussels sprouts. So I'm like, okay, well, I made a pizza with Brussels sprouts on it and I can have this and add more Brussels sprouts. So I can stretch out the dollar a little bit more, but also be able to, um, be creative with how I cook. And, and nowadays, um, we also talked about recently getting like the Instapot. And I'm not I'm not endorsed by any of these companies that I mentioned, by the way. Um, that Instapot has some basic recipes that are, are game changers because you can make meals in 20 minutes that are, are generally healthy. 
And then the last thing is, um, is uh, slowing down when you're eating. The people who are, and, and I'm not saying I'm perfect, please let us know on this discussion of self-care. I am not living this way 100%. But you shouldn't be eating in the car and swallowing things down in 10 minutes. Your brain doesn't get the message that you're full and reaching satiety. So if you're eating too fast and then you wonder why you're hungry two hours later, it's because you didn't slow down and have a meal for 20 minutes. We deserve to sit down and taste the food that we're putting into our body because they are the nutrients that keep us well. We deserve to just slow down and take it easy. I think that you gave some incredible advice there. And I do think that a lot of times we're so used to instant uh, gratification these days. And so it's harder for us. And I think if, if 2020 really taught us anything, it is sort of the benefits of slowing down in all capacities, whether we wanted to or not. Um, you know, for people, I know that other places have possibly looser uh, stay home orders, but I know that you and I are both in Southern California. Um, what are some ways that people can really prioritize self care in your opinion while we're at home? Because, you know, sometimes I'll be the first to say that the walls seem like they're getting smaller and smaller and you're looking at the same, you know, four walls where you eat, sleep and do your work and, you know, entertain yourself and whatnot. So how do you, how do you uh, manage that? Well, like even just learning about meditation, meditation, um, it's a practice, you know, and it, and it, you may start with five minutes. We know that the long-term health benefits of it is 20 minutes a day, even if it's 10 and 10. Um, but even just taking the five minutes to time out, I, I often use an app like this is your worst enemy and this can be your best, your best friend. Because like I use an app that has um, different timings, different sound backgrounds, and there's all sorts of things that are out there. But that meant I had to get up 15 minutes earlier than my husband because he's one of those guys who hits the alarm five times and, and that is not what I want in my meditation. So it meant getting up earlier to do that. If you have a pet, by all means, go out and walk. I, I think the healthiest I am is when I have a pet because I'm allowed to go out and walk. And I guess some people are training their cats to walk as well. Um, I also believe like with exercise, it doesn't have to be this full on workout gym. What can I do right now? I have a stretch band and I have a low grade dumbbell weight and I can do some things in the backyard. But it's one of those things where put up the music. Put up, I always like a little Bruno Mars, some 80s music, and clean <laughs> clean the house with some with some pattern. You know, if you can get the house done in 20 minutes, and if you get the whole family involved, that's even a little bit more fun. And say, look, let's put on the cleaning music, and just get out and keep moving so that you can kind of, you know, honor your space. And then a lot of people think that with this COVID thing that we're in lockdown, and you're you're in you're treating yourself as if you're in isolation you can safely go out and if you have a safe neighborhood to take that 15 minute walk around the block touch base with your neighbors and wave hi stay six feet apart like people don't realize you can leave your space if you're not sick just still pro follow the public health guidelines and, and then um i'm never like this thing again in your computers there's a blue light on there that should be turned off about two hours before your bedtime and ideally you shouldn't be on any electronics before you go to bed because that just keeps you up and you don't sleep very well your brain thinks it's working all the time so it's like it's okay to have you know lower the lighting you know get off the electronics um and just it's almost like you have to reserve that space to take care of you and your family away from being in school or at work i was actually you touch upon family and that's a, actually a good point. Are there things that families can do to together to kind of, besides, I like the idea of the thing, but are there other things that families can do together um, to, and but that, that works as self-care? Well, absolutely. I mean, the, the hard part right now is I think everybody was really gung ho on this, like March to June, and then everybody is just COVID fatigued out and nobody wants to spend time with each other again. Now, good families, if you if you really kind of set the boundaries again, it's mm -hmm. like, no, we're eating together. Like we have found that it is actually better for children's development <laughs> and socialization to actually have a design set family time at dinner. Um, and, it, and it may mean, you know, well, no, Saturday night, anybody can go anywhere. You don't have to do it every single day, but just knowing that everybody communicates and, and gathers at the same time has had a huge health benefit for everybody. Um, the walks may be different or it may be, okay, everybody for an hour, get out of the house, go find something you want to do, and then come back and share about it tonight at dinner. Um, also respecting each other's personal space. <clears throat> if you're not, if you're not having a good day and somebody, I always used to tell parents, I'm like, you know, you can tell your kids as long as you have somebody else to help you. 
you can go tell your kids, I'm putting myself in a timeout for 15 minutes. <clears throat> and that 15 minutes may be journaling. It may be meditating. It may be calling a friend. And when the kids start to see that the parent's healthier and like, oh, wow, mom didn't yell at me because she took a timeout. Um, now, if I, I, I can ask for a timeout, even though I'm not being bad, if the timeout is for basically to have some self-care time. I think that's, that's actually a really good point because I do, I have a, a lot of people in my life that are parents right now and they're struggling with homeschooling and just the same, you know, a lot of people are just very fatigued from all of this. And I think one of the hardest things is that a lot of us perhaps didn't really focus on self-care as much, maybe leading into 2020 and this pandemic. And so it's hard to change these boundaries or set these boundaries or hard to change sort of our, we've already adapted to so much and now having to try to adapt more, I think that's a struggle. But kind of on that note, um, one thing besides our physical health that has been very top of mind, um, and I personally think it's a huge component to your overall health, and I think a lot of people would agree, is mental health. Um, so what are some ways that we can take care of our mental, use self-care to take care of our mental health? Well, I, I, I love one of these phrases I got from a friend one time, and, and this is kind of one of the, now this is, this is combining both mental health for creativity as well as look at your calendar. Do you remember what your family calendar looked like before COVID? You had a kid, if you had kids, I don't even have kids, but my life is very full and I appreciate that. But look, there's some white space right here. Where's your white space in your calendar? Not when you're at work. At work, you know, if it's the eight to five, you know, thing, you're, you're busy. And even during work, you could always have a little white space in there for that mental break. But where's the white space for yourself and your family? Why the kids have to be busy all the time? Like we didn't learn how to be bored. And that's why it's such a, it was such a novelty at the beginning of this pandemic. But now it's like, okay, how now everybody's like pulling their hair out doing that. So I always say like, find some white space in your calendar. And that's where, again, it may be family game night, family dinners, but then there's also time where there's nothing planned at all. And it's okay to do nothing. And yes, you have permission to have a messy room for today. Or yes, you have permission to use your, your electronics for a couple of hours. Um, the other thing that I do is I do a lot of creativity. So that's one way I do it. I've joined a Facebook group. And so we, I am not an artist, but I follow people and I'm willing to try and I'm not selling, you would, yeah, don't look too close. But it's one of those things that when I meet with people all over the world through Facebook and we have similar interests, it's been such a healing force to go through this and to realize in the rest of the world that I'm not alone. Like there are countries that are little locked down. And so when I hear from people from Scotland and Canada and Italy, it's like, it's fascinating. But you know, for two hours, we're learning how to doodle. And that's, that's an amazing thing that just fills my soul. The other thing I do um, is I, I write down something and it doesn't have to be fancy, but I write down every day something to be grateful for, five things every day. And some people, if you're not a big writer, or you don't wanna put it down, just when you go to bed at night, start doing the alphabet and go down A through Z. I get a cue here every every time because of my mom's quilts. And then I used to have a dog named Zulu. And then my, I have a niece whose name starts with a Z. So, you know, sometimes just letting go of that day and finding everything that you're grateful for. Like people, it's hard to get depressed when you're grateful because you got to see, you know, all of the abundance that's around you. And then the other big thing is sleep. <laughs> it's probably the worst thing I'm at. And it's not because I don't want to sleep. I don't know. My body seems to think that I, I'm, I was born in New England. I think my body thinks I'm still back there. And that was more than multiple decades ago. But I'm up at four and, and, and then I'm tired by, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, which is not a good way to function in the world. But I think sleep is important. And one of my godsends was buying custom earplugs because of oh, my wow. husband snoring. <laughs> and I snore. But because I took the time to invest in that, it has been such a game changer to help me to get my sleep. And the other things that I do is I, if I wake up and I start worrying about things, um, I'll tell patients to like keep a little journal by their bedside. Cause I promise you, if you roll over, don't turn on the lights, write it down. It'll be there tomorrow morning. You can deal with it later. And if I wake up, I have to coach myself. Hey, listen, it's not time yet. And I have to keep the clock on, which he doesn't like the lighting. But if I, if I don't, my body literally thinks, Oh, it's time to get up. And I'm like, no, I got two more hours. Go back <laughs> to sleep. You can deal with it later. And then the last, um, well, the second to last thing I wanted to mention, um, a lot of people try to self-medicate their mental health. And um, I'm not a big proponent of, um, you know, using drugs of any type. It's not to say that I've never prescribed a sleeping pill, but uh, this is going to be disappointing to a lot of people. Alcohol has its benefits. This happens to be cranberry juice. <laughs> this, is, this is five ounces. 
Women and people over 65 should not have more than this once a day. If you go too high, you're now ha you're over consuming. And then if you'd like hard liquor, this is one and a half ounces apple juice. That's not much. So if you're really loading up your glasses without the ice, um, you may be self-medicating and you may think that you're helping yourself to get to sleep. But the problem is it robs you of your deep REM sleep, which makes you feel rested. And then people are restless. And, you know, if you can just if you know you're drinking more than this and you can't quit, that's what 12 step or individual chemical dependency counseling is for. But if you can kind of cut back on that for your general health, I think people will do a lot, a lot better in that. And the last thing, because I know we are about ready to wrap it up. The, the last point I made was about being in the moment. You know, a couple of years ago, I was at a retreat. We were about ready to gather again. I was outside and I'm super picky about the weather. I had the perfect temperature, the warm breeze coming across. And I sat on a be bench alone and I'm, I'm just going to sit here and meditate for a little bit. And I only had five minutes. I was upset that I like that was the perfect moment. I should have been able to do that for an hour. And then I realized when we stay in the moment and appreciate the moments, it's about the quality of time that we're sitting in those moments that we will remember forever. That five minutes did more for me in my memory than it did by me taking an hour or even just passing with a friend and having a 15 minute in depth quality conversation was like that. Those are, those are the fuels that feed my soul that helps me to become a better person and to know that I don't have to have more of everything in order to be happy, it's like I can really appreciate those moments. And then therefore, I'm also not comparing myself to other people and feeling like I'm less than. And the same thing, you know, if people are just scrolling on the internet, going through and looking at everybody's social media and all the things that they're traveling and everything that they're doing, I mean, COVID kind of neutralized that. But in reality is when I'm in a room with a patient, I get to see that, you know, it's not all what it appears to be. And I think part of that starts to come because of how we keep comparing ourselves. But when you're practicing self-care, being in the moment, you start to realize that, you know, life is pretty good. Um, and I'm just, I know I'm blessed. And I hope that if you practice these, these things, you will be too. Hi, I mean, you've, I've, 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 you've blown me away, honestly, because I feel like so many things that you've said in this conversation, I feel like I could talk to you for another hour. But a lot of these things are things that I try to get across. Um, on my own platform. We have a little bit of time left though. And so we got a question from the audience, which is um, what services could be found at Express Care to help with nutrition? Awesome. So one of the things that some of our providers have done is that we are you know, looking into functional medicine and a few of our providers are actually um, brought over from the wellness um, services that we had prior to the development of Express Care. So some of us are, are really interested in using nutrition as, as food. And if we have uh, more advanced cases, like even in my situation, because I was worried about certain things when we were gonna do this detox as a group. Um, we have a naturopath um, on services, uh, Dr. Dane Grove, and he was fantastic about looking at my whole context of what I was doing with food and how to do that. So that really helped as well. And I think if you're one of these people that like, oh, I've gone to the doctor over and over and they never help me, I'm not going anywhere. And even if you have like a roadblock, like I don't want to follow the diabetic diet. Some, a consult with somebody like Dane um, can get us motivated to make those little changes. Like I did not want to do this detox with everybody. It was, I did the 10 day, some people did the 28 day. We did it as a group. And sometimes uh, we can possibly offer a wellness uh, consult with as a group. If somebody's interested, we'll try to make it happen. But when we did it as a group together and we shared our experiences and our recipes, um, that 10 days went really fast. My husband joined me. I never thought I would find the things that I found out about myself and I, I couldn't feel better. So, you know, if you want to make an appointment with an express care provider and you're curious at where it goes, we'll get you started. And then we can always try to have you follow up with one of our, with our, one of our experts. Interesting. So it really is express care really is all encompassing on a we lot try. of, what, <laughs> um, we are, Pretty much out of time. I don't know if you wanted to add anything quickly before we wrap up, Kristen. No, I guess the most important thing is is really if you are struggling, if you are you are just you don't even have the energy to want to look into self care. You are consuming alcohol. You're using pot every night to help you with your anxiety or sleep. Uh, please, please use your mental health benefits on the back of your insurance card or talk to Caregiver Health. Um, because you're, you're not alone. And I personally lost a sibling to, to suicide. I've had friends who have had to deal with that. And, you know, it's, those are things where people started 
isolating and pulling away over a year prior to the event happening. So it's super important to, to look out for each other, reach out, ask anybody if they're having help. And if somebody just goes, fine, fine, you know, they're not really doing fine and just say, hey, do you need a minute to go over something? Um, those are the ways that self-care can continue to be of giving of service to other people around you. I think that's so important. I think it's really, especially right now, when, when a lot of us are having to, or most of us are having to socially distance to really check in on the people that you care about and the people within your network and make sure that, um, you know, kindness really does go a long way, I think, is true when it, when it comes down to. But we have gone over time. We, um, so I just want to thank you again, Kristen, for being here and for everyone else for watching. Um, to learn more about our initiatives, programs, services, and ways to give, or if you are looking for medical care, please visit providence.org. Make sure to follow us on social media at Providence Health System for LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and under Providence on Twitter. Thank you so much, everybody, and we will see you soon. Bye. Awesome. Thank you.